Hello, everyone. We're here at Beaver Stadium where Penn State just took down Illinois 21 to 7 in its Big Ten opener. Uh, Penn State moves to 4 0 on the season, remaining undefeated, and they pick up a ranked win over number 19, Illinois. Um, I know Ole Miss lost earlier today, so Penn State will have a chance to move up in the rankings after this one. But, you know, it wasn't always a pretty game. There were some struggles with, with penalties. Um, the offense at times struggled. Um, and then special teams was obviously a big issue. But we'll go ahead and dive right into it. Jamal, what were your biggest takeaways from the game? Uh, first, to start off, you had the whiteout out of eight. The full effect today. Call it what you want. This is the second whiteout. First one you'll see this year. Second one. When Washington comes to Beaver Stadium, obviously the crowd was over 109,000. You saw Beaver Stadium in full force today. I think it was the 14th highest attendance total that it's had. And obviously, you know, stadium pulls all time high. Um, Happy Valley faithful was causing a lot of issues on forcing timeouts, you know, making Illinois really struggle on the offensive side of the ball with their helmet helmets and communication. And I just you know that's a big thing going forward for this crowd. James Franklin said he wanted to rock and it was rock. Yeah, um, James Franklin said in his post game press conference that he thought the crowd impacted seven plays or had seven major impacts, whether that was, you know, a false start or a forced timeout or whatever it might have been. Um, so definitely a big impact on the game, and it was a pretty close game, a one-score game uh, going into the into the fourth quarter there. So obviously, um, you know, the difference that the crowd made, you know, kind of gave Penn State an edge here. Um, you know, not sure what would have happened on maybe neutral side. I think Penn State probably still wins, but obviously you'd like to have that kind of impact. Um, we obviously know what Penn State's fan base is capable of doing. And, you know, like, like you said, I think they got kind of the full whiteout experience today. Um, against Illinois, but diving into kind of some of the players who stood out today. Drew Aller finishes, uh, I think it was 15 for 21, 135 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. So a pretty, you know, average game, I would say, from Drew. Nothing spectacular, but he kind of managed the game. Um, he did what he needed to do, distributed the ball well to his playmakers. And I think the run game was really what took over today. Um, the wide receivers were pretty quiet. Harrison Wallace, four catches for 50 yards. He was the leader. Um, Tyler Warren also got involved, and those two have been kind of the main guys for Penn State all season. Uh, you know, a few other guys, Lynn Clifford, Julian Fleming, I think both had two catches for nine yards. Nick Singleton had two catches as well. But I think it was really the ground game. Wow, I'll let you kind of talk about what you saw from the run game. Today. Yeah, Chase Allen going over 100 yards, Nick Singleton at 90. Obviously, you saw right from the jump that these guys were having success. First half, I think they were averaging five and a half yards per carry. So then you kind of see the offense kind of stray away with it towards the end of the second quarter through. Obviously, they missed a couple of passes. But, just, but they were kind of running a little too many pass plays, I think, for my life, considering how much success that they were having on the ground. But then you saw in the second half that they kind of just reinforced the run game, and you saw that through they kind of really didn't take the foot off the gas. Obviously, Singleton, Jason Allen, they both talked about post game how physicality was really a big thing for them today. I asked him, Singleton, what's his way about running a guy over? He just said, take the control out of a guy. So obviously, they talk about physicality, but Another thing to go off of that is I think the offensive line today, I was actually impressed with because J.D. Nelson and Sal were on the obviously two guards. Uh, Foley went down with injury. You had Sal, obviously, who's been starting right guard for three years. He went down first. You saw J.D. now then fill in the left guard with big uh, Joanna and moving to right. And they obviously didn't get the success. It was still going, but then you saw J.D. go down. So then you had two freshmen, Cooper Cousins, who you know, everyone has been hearing about all offseason, have a real meaningful action today in the Big Ten opener. And I... You can see why that everyone's speaking so highly of him. No penalties, you know, he didn't really any notice any like fall off in the run game. So I think obviously you know, Nick Sean is one of the best duos in the country, but I think they credit to the offensive line today and Nick Sean and Nick both had a high thing to say about the post game. Yeah, um, I got to talk to Drew Aller, who was also very complimentary of the offensive line. Um, obviously anytime you lose two of your two of your guards, that's kind of a big deal. But you know, Penn State had some guys step up. Um, you know, whether it was J.D. coming in before the injury or whether it was Cooper Cousins, the true freshman, coming in and looking good. Um, I thought Penn State, if anything, the run game kind of improved as the game went along. That's something that Drew kind of talked about a little bit was he was able to actually notice, you know, how, how kind of the offensive line throughout the game was able to wear down Illinois' defense and kind of start to assert their will uh, as the game progressed. So obviously that's where your depth comes into play. Penn State was lucky because they have three yards. Um, between Ben Gaione, Sal Wormley, and J.D. Nelson, all three had five or more career starts heading into the season. So having that kind of experience at guard definitely helped them today with two major injuries. We didn't get any update from Franklin, and we probably won't until Wednesday about their status, whether it's you know a long-term thing or whether they'll be expected to come back into the lineup against 
UCLA uh, next Saturday. But regardless, we can flip to the defensive side of the ball for Penn State. Um, I believe uh, Jalen Reed led the, led the way again in tackles with nine today. Um, he had another good game. And then and then behind him, um, I think Kobe King and, and Abdul Carter stood out to be um, at linebacker. Obviously, Abdul was kind of back and forth between linebacker and defensive end. But between those three guys, I thought they all had a really good game. And obviously, um, you know, the linebackers were kind of asked to step up with Dom DeLuca being out. Um, obviously, he's not a starter, but he was an important depth piece, kind of that third or fourth linebacker uh, who was certainly in the mix. So without him, you're challenged a little bit to step up, and I thought they responded well. I thought Kobe in particular had a great game. Um, and then even Tony Rojas, another linebacker, um, I thought he made some plays at big moments. He only finished with four tackles, so he wasn't at the top of the team, at the top of the stat sheet. Um, but I thought his tackles came in really big moments. Um, so I thought he was a pretty good play for Kobe. Yeah, I was just talking about the linebackers, Cody King, Abdul Carter, um, big days. I think it was interesting because Abdul actually played linebacker today for the first time all season, considering, you know, he's been at the defensive end, and they said they were going to rotate him in and out, considering he started at linebacker, but he didn't really. So that be the first three games he got, so he took that in action today. I think it was the best game of the year. Uh, so Kobe King had a pair of tackles, PFLs. Um, but another guy who didn't touch on was Dave Durant. He had a pair of sacks, and he was in four tackles, PFL. And he's the guy who doesn't really show up in the stat sheet, but you can argue he's been the best defensive player of the next year. He's certainly one of the most efficient. And, you know, obviously, big time guy on the defensive tackle spot. Really caused a lot of havoc on the Dahl Myers today, whether it's his pressure. He impacts the game in ways that don't really show up on the stat sheet. So I thought that was a big, big game for him. Just going to say. We can transition to the third side of the ball, which is special teams. Penn State had some more struggles today. Kicker Sandra Sahadak uh, was 0 for 2 on field goals, both from 40 yards out. So obviously ones that you would expect him to be able to make. Um, you know, we've heard that his max range is 60 yards. So obviously he shouldn't be struggling with a, with a pair of 40 yarders there. But uh, he ends up getting benched and, they, and Penn State brings in Ryan Barker for the last extra point of the game um, on that third touchdown. So um, it looks like Barker might have taken that job over. Uh, after Sahadak falls to uh, now two for five on the season. Um, and that comes after he went 0 for two last year um, against West Virginia before getting benched. I think at this point, you have to believe that it's just something mental with him. Um, I think he has the leg talent and the accuracy and things like that to do it during practice. But as soon as he gets into a game environment, and especially a tougher game environment, because you know we saw that he was, he was buying against maybe inferior competition where the stakes were lower, or, or you know things like that, but in in kind of the bigger games and the harder environments, that's where he seems to be at his worst. Um, so that'll be an interesting situation to monitor going forward. I mean, what do you think Penn State does at the kicker situation? It's tough because this is a guy I obviously coming in after the Bowling Green game I got to talk to, and he was confidence was at an all time high because obviously you just touched on it a little bit, but he's got the talent to make these kicks. But it's just obviously it's mental, you know, two for five each start of the year, and obviously. James Franklin talked about it post game how the offense and defense did enough today to put him in a position where those kicks were necessary. But there's going to be points where those kicks are necessary, as you know, as the Big Ten schedule heats up, as you get to some of these opponents, and then even at the playoffs, you know, you can make or break a season or a game on a more smaller scale on a kick. And obviously, that's tough. That's the toughest part about being a kicker. But it's tough when you've seen it over and over again. And I think Ryan Barker hitting the PAT at the end of the game. He's going to say something because uh, right when Sahidak missed his second field goal, Barker immediately went to the net on the sideline and started warming up. So if they really wanted to have his confidence, keep Sahidak's confidence up, um, they would have had him pick that final extra point, I think. So yeah, I think it's going to be a matter of wait and see come UCLA next week for a little big new kickoff. But I think Barker's going to have the job. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised that they didn't go to him earlier um, after Sahidak missed that first 40 yard kick. Um, you know, just considering how close the competition was throughout camp, James Franklin said that all three kickers, Chase Meyer as well, said that all three kickers were within a couple percentage points of each other during camp in, in terms of field goals. Now, Sahadak led that group, but um, as, he, as he said, it was a very close competition. And so to see Sahadak go out and struggle over and over again and to see him, you know, miss that first 40 yarder today, you're, you're thinking, you know, when do they kind of pull the trigger and decide to move on to someone else? Um, so. Again, say he like two for five now on the year. I don't know if he ever gets another chance to kick a field goal at Penn State, kind of now that he's been benched. But, you know, maybe they try to stick with him against UCLA next week because that's kind of another game where Penn State should be a heavy favorite. And, you know, uh, you know, a missed field goal in that game might not be the end of the world. And so maybe they want him to build up his confidence again. But I feel like they've given him almost too long of a leash at this point. 
Um, and I think it's time to make a change there because um, like, you know, like you mentioned, uh, th these are the types of things that can cost you games or even your season. Um, and, you know, it didn't end up costing Penn State today, but I kind of thought it would at, at, at one point. Um, I was kind of wondering if it, would, if it would come back to bite Penn State. Um, but they escape with the win, remain undefeated. It's uh, the highest uh, ranked team that Penn State has beaten with Drew Aller as a starter. So, you know, some silver lining there, Penn State with a, with a pretty big win, um, especially, you know, as, as far as the Drew Aller era goes. Um, and they'll move on to UCLA with, you know, all their goals still in front of them and, and, you know, the playoff and everything like that's still possible. So obviously some things to change, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens next weekend. So that's everything we have for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.